Hello everyone, I'm Fan. Today I'm going to share one of the most commonly used cooling systems. In this setup we'll be using the Aqua Tuner, so let's first take a look at how it works. The working principle of the Aqua Tuner is actually quite simple. It will lower the temperature of the input liquid by a fixed 14 degree before outputting it, and then dump that heat into the surrounding environment. When we open the liquid pipe overlay, we can see that the water in the pipe at the Aqua Tuner's input is at 49.9 degree, while the output water is at 35.9 degree, exactly 14 degrees lower. What we need to pay attention to is the freezing point of the liquid entering the Aqua Tuner. If the liquid will freeze after being cooled by 14 degrees, this will cause the output pipe to break, which will stop the Aqua Tuner from working. For example, if I replace the water on the left with water at 5 degrees, cooling it by 14 degrees will bring it down to minus 9 degrees, which will cause it to freeze. When we open the liquid pipe overlay, we'll see that no liquid is coming out, and the output pipe has already broken. Generally, for cooling your base, water is enough to keep the temperature below 30 degrees. Another building we'll be using is the steam turbine, which is typically paired with the aqua tuner. The steam turbine is a rather interesting generator. It has five intake ports at the bottom, and when it's built on the floor, the other side of that floor needs to have steam at over 125 degree for it to operate. However, we don't need to make sure all five intake ports have steam. Even if only one port detects steam while the others are blocked, the steam turbine will still function normally. This brings us to the steam turbine's power output. Its maximum power is 850 watts. Why do I say maximum? Because if any intake ports are blocked or the steam doesn't have enough heat, the turbine won't be able to reach its full capacity. Essentially, the steam turbine takes in steam, cools it down into 95 degrees C water, and converts part of that heat into electrical power. On top of the steam turbine, there's something that looks like a progress bar. It shows the turbine's current power output. The fuller the bar, the greater the power the turbine is producing. We also need to know the steam turbine's overheat temperature. According to the description, the overheat temperature is 1000 degree. But actually, the turbine stops working once its temperature exceeds 100 degree. Finally, we need to understand how the liquid bridge works, which is essential for building liquid circuits. When liquid passes through a bridge, it seems like the liquid flows inside it, but actually, the liquid from the input pipe is transferred to the output pipe. The bridge itself doesn't store or move any liquid. After the transfer, we can see that the input side shows empty, so the next cell of liquid in the pipe flows forward, and that new cell is then transferred again. This cycle continues, making the liquid keep moving within the closed section of the pipe. This rule also applies to gas pipes. Now we return to our liquid cooling system. The core of this setup is how the pipes are connected. We first need a liquid bridge, connecting the liquid cooler's input and output in parallel with the bridge's input and output. The rules for parallel connections were explained in my previous video. The input pipe connects to the liquid cooler, and the output pipe comes from the bridge's output. This guarantees that liquid flows through the cooler when it's running, and circulates through the bridge when it's off. Next, a liquid pipe thermo sensor should be installed on the pipe right next to the cooler's input and linked to the liquid cooler. When the sensor detects the liquid temperature below the set point, it shuts down the cooler. This is why liquid circulation is essential. Without it, liquid stops flowing when the cooler is off and the sensor only reads one cell, which would disable the system. With circulation, the liquid continuously exchanges heat with the environment, allowing the sensor to monitor multiple cells. Once the temperature rises, the cooler restarts. Then you can build your liquid circulation cooling system. Use conductive liquid pipes in the areas you want to cool and insulated liquid pipes elsewhere. Just pay attention to the pipe material. Don't forget to cool your steam turbine as well. In the sample I showed, I connected the steam turbine's cooling pipes directly to the cooling system. If the temperature difference between the area you need to cool and the steam turbine isn't too big, connecting them in series is fine. Otherwise, you'll need to build a separate liquid cooler to cool them. 
Next, I'll show the building process. For cooling a base, one steam turbine is usually enough to absorb all the heat it produces. So here I'm making it 11 tiles long, starting by enclosing a two tile high foundation. Then follow along as I build the pipe bridge and aqua tuner setup. Here, to reduce heat loss, the insulated liquid pipes are made from igneous rock. The aqua tuner is best built from steel, but if you're confident the temperature won't get too high, you can use gold amalgam instead. Still, I recommend going straight with steel. Then install the liquid pipe thermosensor and make sure you don't forget this step. Build a bottle emptier to prepare for pouring water. Then connect the pipes, with the input side going to the input of the aqua tuner and the output side connected to the output of the pipe bridge. I'm gonna connect it to the oxygen generation system I built earlier. Some comments mentioned that this system sends high temperature oxygen into the base, so this time we're cooling it down. Make sure to use conductive pipes where cooling is needed and insulated pipes elsewhere. You need to be careful when using lead as the material for conductive pipes. Lead has a melting point of only 327.5 degrees, so don't use it if the surrounding temperature is too high. Then we connect the wires. Now we start adding the liquids. First, pour a layer of crude oil or petroleum, then add an appropriate amount of water. Here, I poured 600 kilograms of water. Remember to adjust the amount of water based on the heat of what you want to cool. The purpose of pouring a layer of crude oil is to enhance heat transfer, and two layers of liquids ensure that there is no other gas inside the steam chamber. Then we seal the top, leaving one outlet to prevent duplicants from trapping themselves inside. Build a drain and the pipes for the steam engine, then you can seal it. Before sealing, double check that all the pipes are properly connected. Place the steam turbine and a large transformer then connect the wires. The steam turbine can be connected directly to the main line, and the aqua tuner's wires should be connected to the transformer's output. One steam turbine is not enough to power the aqua tuner in this system, so we need additional electricity support. Now we start filling the loop with water. There are two ways to get water into the loop. The first method is to use a liquid bridge, placing the bridge's output end on the loop and connecting the input end to the water supply. The second method is to place a bottle drainer directly on the loop. Since the base doesn't need to be cooled below zero degree, we don't have to worry about the water freezing. There's still a pipeline bridge here that isn't connected. Let's build it now. Make sure the aqua tuner remains off until the water loop is fully filled. All right. Now the pipeline is full. We stop adding water and set the sensor to 15 degree, so the area we want to cool stays below degree. Let's see how it works. Right now, the temperature here is around 40 plus degrees, and high temperature oxygen is still being produced. Let's see how the temperature changes. We can see that in less than one cycle, low temperature areas have already started to appear. I forgot to pause the game, and when I came back, five cycles had already passed. But we can see that the entire area's temperature has now stabilized at 15 degrees. From now on, all the oxygen coming out of here will be at 15 degrees. One more thing to add. Remember to pour some water or other liquid under the steam turbine to improve heat transfer. All right, that's all for this video. If you found it helpful, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, I'm Fan, and I'll see you in the next one.